Good morning and welcome back to com sorry. Good morning and welcome back to Concrete Community Bible Church. Let us pray for a moment. Father in heaven, we just give you this day. We are just glad that you gave us this day to serve you and be with you and be part of you. As we sing, we become one with you. Let us all be able to worship and praise together in the name of Jesus. Amen. John 13, 33-34 Little children, yet a little while I am with you. Ye shall seek me, and as I said unto the Jews, whither I go, ye cannot come. So now I say to you, a new commandment I give to, unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. In my heart there rings a melody. There rings a melody with heaven's harmony. In my heart there rings a melody. There rings a melody of love. This is hymn number 514.
sing hallelujah to the King of kings, give him praise and glory above all things. Sing hallelujah to the Prince of Peace, for the crown of thorns he gave for you and me. Now sing and glorify his name, never let the world come in between. Sing and testify of him, and how he's become your to the Gospel of John, the 17th chapter. Let me review before we cover that last section. The context is that Jesus is in the final hours of his life. And beginning in chapter 13 of John's Gospel, Jesus and his disciples have celebrated the Passover. Then Jesus has demonstrated servant leadership as he got down and washed the feet of his disciples. And he did so to give them an example that we should be servants of one another. Then in the middle of this incredible teaching from John 13 through John 16 is this promise. Jesus says in John chapter 14, verse 13, And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Now to ask in his name, to ask in the name of Jesus is to ask in line with his word and his will. It is to ask according to the person and the purposes of God. Since the subject is prayer, all the examples we have of Jesus ultimately come down to two teachings. One in Matthew chapter 6 and one in John chapter 17. In Matthew chapter 6, we have prayer being taught. That is, uh, Jesus is teaching us a pattern of prayer. We have been raised with the, uh, the title of that passage in Matthew 6 being uh, the Lord's Prayer. But I think a better title, as I've shared these past two weeks, is the Disciples' Prayer. And then in John chapter 17, we have prayer being caught. And by that I mean, Jesus gives us an example in that he allows us to listen in on his prayer to the Father. And it is this passage, John 17, that I refer to as the Jesus prayer. Now, we are invited to watch. We are invited to listen in on the most personal and intimate of conversations between Jesus and his Father, which is in heaven. It's the longest conversation we have. It is the most personal. It is the most intimate. And because it's recorded in Scripture, we have the opportunity to read it, and we have the opportunity to reflect on it. So let me give you the outline thus far. In John chapter 17, verses 1 through 5, Jesus prays for himself. And the two things we learned in those five verses are this. Prayer is, first of all, to be relational. Jesus begins the prayer by saying, Father. He reaffirms relationship. 
The second thing we learn as Jesus prays for himself is that prayer is to be intentional. He says that he might glorify the Father. So our intention in prayer is to be reminded of our relationship and then also to understand that every prayer we want to be answered in a way that would bring glory to God the Father. So in verses 1 through 5, Jesus prays for himself. In verses 6 through 19, Jesus prays for his disciples. And I believe we could incorporate ourselves in that because we are his present day disciples. Jesus prays two things. He first of all prays for their protection and second of all for their sanctification, that they would be set apart from the world and set apart unto God. Now, our response, three things. We are first of all to be joyful, second of all to be prayerful, that is to follow his example, and thirdly, we are to be intentional. That is that we seek to be dedicated and consecrated unto God. We seek to be sanctified, set apart. We turn our attention to the final section in which Jesus prays for his church. This part of the prayer begins in verse 20 of John 17. He says, neither pray I for these alone, meaning his disciples, in verses 6 through 19, but for them also which shall believe on me through their work. So he's praying for the church to come. He's looking ahead to all future believers. And Jesus had already promised in Matthew 16 that he would build his church. And he builds his church as men and women are faithful to their calling to be messengers of the message. The message of eternal life as found in Jesus Christ and him alone. He continues in verse 21, that they may all be one. He addresses this in verse 21, verse 22, verse 23. It is the idea of unity. Now let's understand, he's not asking for uniformity. Uniformity is that everyone looks and thinks alike. That's not what he's praying for. He's praying for unity, that we would have a singleness of heart, a singleness of purpose. In the book of Acts, there's a phrase used, I believe, 10 times. It is the phrase, one accord. It means to be of one mind, of one purpose. And the model, as we see in the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verses 4, 5, and 6, is the triune God. The Father, there is one Father, there is one Son, and there is one Spirit. Three in one, giving us a picture of the unity that we are to have in the body of Christ. And he says, because of our unity, he says uh, in verse 21, that they may be one as thou, Father, are me and I in them, that they may also be one in us, Here's the key, that the world may believe that you have sent me. To believe what Jesus believed. As unity is demonstrated through our love for one another, it is that means by which we have a testimony to an unbelieving community. Our love for one another as evident in our unity, and our unity is made evident by our love, we have an incredible opportunity to communicate a message of hope. Jesus says in John chapter 13, by this, shall all men know, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples, that you have love for one another. Unity is a result of love for one another. No love means no unity, means no testimony. So Jesus prays three times in the section for our unity. He continues in this prayer, verse 22, and the glory which you gave me and the glory which thou hast given me, I have given them that they may be one even as we are one. This glory begins at our salvation, Christ in you, the hope of glory, Colossians chapter one, verse 27, and it continues throughout our journey. If you move ahead to the book of Romans, 
Romans chapter 8, follow this chain of thought, if you will, this, this spiritual journey. Romans chapter 8, beginning in verse 29. For whom he did foreknow, speaking of God, for whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed, to be changed, to be transformed to the image of his Son, that they might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he called, and whom he called, them he justified, and whom he justified, them he is glorified. Notice the grammar in that passage. In the mind of God, that act from justification to glorification is completed. It is yet a further evidence that our salvation is secure based upon the work of Jesus Christ. Back to John chapter 17. He says, I in them and thou in me that they may be made perfect in one. That word perfect means to be complete, lacking nothing. It is to I communicate the idea that the work is finished. In fact, when Jesus was on the cross, in one of his seven final sayings, one of those sayings was, it is finished. The same root word that Jesus used in John, uh, in those words, it is finished, are used here in this passage. To be perfect, to be complete, to be finished. That's his prayer. And he sees us completed in him. That the world may know that you have sent me and that you have loved them as you have loved me. Once again, spiritual unity. It is at the very heart of Jesus' prayer. Unity in the body of Christ. Unity that is made manifest through our love for one another. He continues in verse 24, Father, reaffirming relationship, I will that thou also, whom thou hast given me, be with me where I am, looking ahead to when we are in the presence of God forever and ever, that they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me, for thou did love me from the foundation of the world. Jesus, in his prayer, is reminding of the Father, reminding the Father that he shared his glory prior to becoming man. We read in Colossians chapter 1 that Jesus Christ is creator of heaven and earth. And so he was in his full glory, and then he limited himself to becoming a man. And we read of that incredible um, journey from heaven to earth in the book of Philippians, the second chapter. The prayer continues. Instead of referring to his father just as father, he said earlier in the chapter, Holy Father, and now in verse 25, he says, O righteous Father. And let me just pause for a moment. Sometimes it is good that we address God in relationship to his attributes. We're reminded in Romans chapter 11, verse 22, behold the goodness and the severity of the Lord. We have a relationship with the Father. And I think sometimes because of that, we become very casual in our prayer to God. It is interesting that the Son of God stops in his prayer and calls his father, O oh, righteous father, addresses him in light of his righteousness. As I said, I think we would do well to follow that example, that when we approach God, we approach him based upon relationship, but sometimes we need to be reminded who he is, his character and his attributes. O oh, righteous father, the world has not known thee, but I have known thee, and these have known thee, which has sent me. Three times in this verse, he uses that word to know. It is not an intellectual understanding. It is an intimate, abiding relationship. That's what he desires. 
And in fact, if you go back to John chapter 17 in this prayer earlier, he says, and this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. How do we get to know the Father? How do we get to know the Son? How do we get to know the Holy Spirit? It begins in his word. In that psalm, speaking of Jesus, a prophetic messianic psalm, Psalm 40, verse 7, it says, In the volume of the book, it is written of me. We get to know Jesus primarily through the word of God. Three times in verse 25, he uses that word know. And then he says in verse 26, as he brings his prayer to a conclusion, he says, I have declared unto them thy name. I have made known unto them thy name. The psalmist says, the name of the Lord is a strong tower, and the righteous run to that tower. It is what the name represents, who God is, and what he has done. He says, I have declared thy name. He is saying, I have declared who you are to my followers. And I will declare that the love wherein you have loved me, that, they, that it might be in them and I in them. This idea that, once again, intimate, abiding relationship. And that's how Jesus concludes John's prayer. In John chapter 17, verses 1 through 5, praying for his, excuse me, praying for himself. Verses 6 through 19, praying for his disciples. Verses 20 through 26, praying for his church. And the primary, primary aspect of his prayer in verses 20 through 26, that we might be one. And that our oneness and our unity is patterned after the oneness and unity in the triune God. So as we bring these three weeks to a close, how do we move forward? What, what do we do in light of this prayer? I'm going to suggest three things. First, I think we read. We continue to read this prayer. We read it um, in our favorite translation, we read it in other translations, uh, we listen to it being read, we make a habit to read it periodically, maybe on the first Sunday of each month in anticipation of communion. But just because our study of this prayer is concluding today, our reading and reflecting on this prayer should continue. So the first thing I think we do is, is we continue to read the prayer. The second thing we should do is continue to study the prayer. When I began this series three weeks ago, I shared with you pure, uh, three Puritan authors who had written, one had written 400 pages on this prayer, one had written 500 pages, and one had written 700 pages. And so uh, after I shared that, Richard Myers in our church uh, sent me an email, and he discovered that the late Baptist preacher Charles Spurgeon had preached 145 sermons on John chapter 17. So my exhortation is that we continue to study this prayer. And I always say with a caveat that we always be discerning with our resources. We read it, we study it, and finally I think we pray it. That's been the whole intention Jesus has given us an example, not just for our enrichment, but it might be a pattern that periodically we pray for ourselves as Jesus prayed for himself in verses 1 through 5. Periodically, we pray for those closest to us as Jesus did in verses 6 through 19. And then in verses 20 through 26, that we periodically pray for the local church. We pray for the churches in our community. We pray for the churches in our country. And we pray for the churches around the world. And what is our prayer? Jesus has given us the pattern in verses 20 through 26. Now, 
I want to uh, bring an Old Testament understanding in these final words. The Bible teaches that Jesus is our high priest. That's why this is often referred to as the high priestly prayer. Now, remember, the role of a priest is to represent the people to God. The prophet speaks on God's behalf to the people. The priest speaks on behalf of the people to God. Jesus is our high priest. And as I previously have shared in Romans chapter 8, verse 34, and Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25, Jesus is interceding for us. I like how John Vernon McGee puts it. He says, the Lord Jesus Christ is our great high priest. In the Old Testament, the high priest carried the names of the children of the tribes of Israel with him when he went into the presence of God. On the breastplate of the high priest were 12 precious stones. On each of those stones was the name of a tribe of Israel. Now, catch this. When the high priest went into God's presence wearing that breastplate, he pictured the Lord Jesus Christ, who is at the right hand of God, interceding for us. And J. Vernon McGee concludes, he carries us on his breast, on his heart, which speaks of his love. We remain close to the heart of our high priest, Jesus Christ. John chapter 17 teaches us, John chapter 17 reminds us that as we remain close to the heart of Jesus, so we ought to remain close to his heart, for we are on his heart. We ought to be intentional that we purpose to develop intimacy with him. And one of the ways we do that is to follow his example, to follow his pattern, and to make the Jesus prayer our prayer. That's what we learn in John chapter 17. He prays for himself, he prays for his disciples, and he prays for his church. Jesus is praying for you and I today. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that as we continue to live our lives in the midst of tumultuous times, that we have the promise the assurance that Jesus is interceding for us. And I pray, Father, that we would draw comfort from that fact. But more than simply being comforted, I pray, Father, that we would seek to follow his example, that we would seek to follow this pattern. Father, that we would not only read and reflect upon this prayer, but, Father, it would serve as a pattern for our own praying. Father, what a glorious promise that we have, that if we ask anything according to your name, according to your will, will, according to your word, Father, that you will hear us and you will answer us. Father, if we move forward in making the Jesus prayer our prayer, Father, we know that we will be praying in the center of of your will. Father, that you will not only hear us, but you will answer those prayers in your timing in a way that brings you the greatest glory. And we thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm -hmm.